You guys often ask me, how do I use this Jung stuff to develop actual confidence? How do I build confidence with this Jungian theory? You don't really want to know. You don't necessarily want to be able to pick up all this knowledge and stuff it in your big brain. If it's going to leave you feeling like Gollum, feeling hunched over and unhappy, not being able to use it, not being able to turn it into something functional, what you want is you want to experience sizzle in your blood. You want to experience walking into rooms and everybody turning their head and being like, there's the guy with all the confidence, there's the guy swinging his arms, who uh, understands who he is, who's grounded in his personality and whatnot. So the big question is, how do we take this knowledge that everybody is reading and actually turn it into something that leads to tangible and real results? And so what we're going to talk about today is like five simple steps and simple strategies and simple directions you can go in order to take Jungian theory and the ideas in Jung and a mental model to go with it in order to allow you to turn it into actual, real, tangible confidence. So the first question you have to ask is why am I not confident? Why is there something wrong with me? What is, why am I anxious perhaps? Why am I walking around and I'm in a position where things are bad? Why do I walk into rooms and have an assault of negative and anxious energy come over me? Um, what is the sort of functional part of this? Well, a lot of people describe to me having a voice in their head, a self-talk in their head that's sort of being like, you're a piece of shit, you're a loser, you're worthless, you're nothing, I hate you, you're pathetic, oh my God, everybody judges you, everybody doesn't like you, you have that voice in your head that's criticized you, making you feel bad about yourself. You're beating yourself up. You're not walking around being like, I am the best. I am the happy, confident guy. I am the best person ever. I'm the person who struts and no one cares. I've got the sizzled blood. I've got this fire in my belly that I feel. You don't feel like that person and you have this demon in your head that's attacking you. I, I don't know, maybe it's the voice in your head or your ego or something like this. Now, this shows you the sort of standard way that most people approach fixing their confidence and actually gives us insight to the way that you can use Jung to do this. Most people look at this voice in the head problem and they will do stuff like they'll often turn to things like cognitive behavioral therapy to try fix the voice in your head or they'll do stuff like affirmations to try recode the voice in your head the basic idea is that you sit down and you imagine that you've got a subconscious mind and this subconscious mind is like a supercomputer and your whole life you've incorrectly coded this because people have been mean to you and stuff like this and so for that reason the voice that comes out of the subconscious is negative and being a bully and calling you a calling you a bum calling you not cool and all these type of things and so what you need to do is like a computer coder you need to sit there and be like I'm the best I'm the best I'm a juicy boy I'm the best I'm the best I'm a juicy boy and chant that stuff over and over again and recode yourself and look I'm all for you doing that as much as you want but uh, you have to wonder does that actually work and what I mean by that is that the sort of conception the mental model here is you've got a computer and you're the active coder and all you have to do is just recode the computer Jung would suggest that this subconscious or unconscious as he, as he would say it is not really a computer not a dead machine that you can just code it's like a living entity a living being being that you have to begin to work with, you have to develop a relationship with. There's no way that you can necessarily control it. In some sense, it's bigger than you. And your job is that you have to actually learn how to work with it and understand what it is and develop a, a comprehensive, in-depth relationship as if it's a wife or something like that for you to develop with. And the voice that comes out of this subconscious is a lot more complicated than merely a, a self-talk or just a bully in your head or a badly coded subconscious mind or something like this. In fact, that voice itself is the voice my mom was trying to burst in there is the voice of the instincts is the voice of the 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 soul the voice of your your deeper body and your deeper passions and older parts of you important parts of you that scream out of this unconscious and try to lead you to do what you decide to do and your choices in your life and whatnot so to put it simply that voice is the voice of life and we're going to talk about what that means now in a second so in order to understand how this voice is the voice of life and how you're supposed to correctly relate to it you need to understand what life is trying to do what is her problem life is in this universe like all the rest of us actually we're all our life and she's playing a game where she's trying to defeat death entropy and time and everything is dying all the time this is what the buddhists tell us and life is sort of like oh god i don't want that to happen so she's playing a video game against this and what she's done is she's chosen earth as this little realm this little minecraft um, server where she's going to actually wage war against death and what she's done is she's chosen life forms these plants around us these animals that we are the, the birds the trees everything everything that moves everything that lives is life now all of these are these little avatars, these little pawns, these little soldiers in life's big chess game against death. And the basic way that she defeats death is by getting us to procreate, by getting us to bang. It's quite crude, it's quite simple, but this is how the game works. And so she's driving us all, all the time to achieve these goals, to make sure that we procreate and push on. Now there's more to life than simply procreation, but that's one of the kind of foundational things that you can understand. Now the way that she controls each of us as individuals is that she's basically set us up where she's coded us 
with a whole host of DNA that's full of these things that we call instincts. And these instincts are literally like her way of making us make decisions that are suitable, that allow us to defeat death. These instincts are very important because they don't, you might have an ego, we all have an egos for example, but the instincts are actually more foundational and fundamental than the ego and they're able to bully the ego out of the way and make us do stuff because life has been playing this game for billions of years and so she's learned the things that are important. She's sort of come down to the fundamentals, the basics, you know, get, get a girlfriend and procreate because that's basically the main thing that's going to help us defeat death. We create another avatar for another generation, death is in a bad place. And so when you're walking around and you've got that little ego of yours and you're blathering away and you're thinking to yourself and you've got this self-talk going on or something like this and life sees a beautiful girl, she's going to press the instinct button and she's going to make you feel a lot of emotions and it's going to push your ego out of the way and make you lose your focus and zone in and focus on the girl and drive you towards desiring and wanting her and leave you all this all kind of fucked up in your head as you're trying to make, make a decision. What the hell do I do? What's going on? What's happening to me? All these type of things. So life has that type level of control over you. Now the correct way that you can think about this is that you're basically an avatar. You're basically a GTA avatar for life and life is sitting there in the astral plane looking through a screen down at you and she's holding these controllers and she's watching you play the video game of life and she's thinking to herself all right well she has all these buttons and these buttons are the instincts and when she's watching and when she sees a girl she's gonna smash the button like lust 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 go get the lust thing and when she sees food she's gonna smash hunger and desire and when she sees someone who's trying to intimidate you she's gonna smash anger and all these type of things and this fundamental reality is how she drives you to do things, how she drives you to make decisions. Now what's really important for you is to understand exactly how this influences you because when you're playing a normal video game you press these buttons and electricity goes down into the machine and it moves the GTA avatar but the way life does this with you is she fills you full of chemicals. She has this sort of chemical controller and she's able to make you literally like make your, your, your adrenal glands switch on and all sorts of noradrenaline and stuff and dopamine and all these things shoot off in your body when you do the things that she wants you to do. Now, how this relates to the idea of confidence is that if you want to gain confidence, you need to build and understand life's relationship to you and what she's trying to get you to do and you need to figure out a way that you can begin to work with her so that when she presses these buttons trying to tell you to do these instincts, you actually get rewarded with the good chemicals that she can give. If you go for the things you want like um, desires or g get the food and all these type of things and do all this stuff correctly and do what she wants, she will give you bursts of, of reward things like dopamine and more serotonin and more hormones and all these good things and you will feel better and you will feel more confident. You might, you might remember Jordan Peterson saying that the top lobster gets most of the serotonin and its posture gets stronger and it feels more confident. This is literally true and this is the way that you've been coded. Life works with the lobsters the same way she works with you. The greatest problem you have to avoid is when you have a bad relationship with life and you don't understand what these, these desires and these instincts and these consciences and these voices in your head are trying to say and you work against them, she's going to constantly fill you with bad chemicals. Your, your serotonin and like a video game all your health bars are going to go down and you're going to hunch over and start to turn into a fucking golem where you're going to be sitting there being a crepid, decrepit little creep and this is going to make you feel less confident and you're going to feel bad about yourself and you're going to start complaining and talking to me about how you're all anxious and you've got all, and this voice in your head that's always criticizing you. Now this fundamental mental model sets up absolutely everything you need to know about how to work with your emotions because it gets the correct first principle about why your emotions are there and where they come from. Now the question that we have to ask is what strategies or where can we look in order to audit our lives to look for where we should be getting good chemicals, we should be obeying life and working with life and what we might be doing along. So we're going to talk about five ways that we can do this right now. So the simplest things you can do in order to start getting life to press the nice buttons, the good feeling buttons and fill you with good chemicals so you get a sizzle and you start to feel more domineering and start to develop an aura, uh, an outward extending of, of astral energy out of yourself, of good energy out of yourself as if so you, someone looks at you and be like, oh life is smashing all the right buttons in that person, that person is in a good spot. The very simplest place you can go is looking at your health and looking at the way that you relate to the actual avatar that you are, your body, the way you, the stuff you put into this and the way you deal with this. Now the first port of call is about the foundation of how life works with the body and what life does. If the body is not breathing, life considers it largely dead and that is a failure. So when you're not breathing, life is like, oh fuck, this is not good. This guy is definitely, definitely died. When he's breathing shallow, she's like, oh God, this guy is panicking. He might be getting choked. He might be in the ocean drowning or something like this. There's something wrong. And when you're breathing nice and calm and nice and slow, 
slow as all the religions have noticed as the buddhists have noticed as well when you calm your breathing down and make it big elongated breathing and take authority and control over your breathing and life sitting there listening and feeling these chemicals and watching your body and watching this avatar and she's like oh look at this guy he's calmly breathing nice and slow and there's no pressure at all this guy's all right. This guy's doing fine. This guy's not about to get eaten by a lion. This guy's not drowning. There's nothing wrong with this guy at all. Not, may, may as well give him some good chemicals. Hey, bro, you're doing fine there. You know, keep it up. Whatever you're doing, whatever got you to this position, just keep this stuff up. And so if you just sit down and you just take authority over your breathing and work with your breathing and make sure in all these situations, your breathing comes back and grounds how you're feeling about yourself, you will get filled with good chemicals. And this is well studied. When you breathe properly, your brain starts to release more dopamine, all these type of things start to happen you start to regulate all this type of stuff and you ultimately start to feel better you control your mood there's very few people who do extended periods of correct meditation focused on this stuff who don't get some type of benefit now does this mean you have to turn into a buddhist no it means that you have to become aware of this reality of why life would hit that button if she sees you not breathing properly she uses that almost like as the health bar if this guy ain't breathing she's going to start hitting the bad chemicals if he is she's going to start hitting the good chemicals and this is really important to keep in mind Step number one. All right, next up, step number two to deal with the body is what you've got to ask yourself is, all right, well, how do these chemicals get into my body? Where does my body get the chemicals from? And of course, that's your food. And you'd want to make it more romantic. You want to make it about the archetypes. You want to make it about all these really cool things like doing some type of verbal jujitsu and reorganizing, re-putting in all the books into your brain to make yourself feel more confident and good. But ultimately, the chemicals that make your blood sizzle comes from the food that you eat. For example, if you're having a sugar crash or you're not eating enough protein or something like this or you're eating foods that are full of toxic chemicals it's going to be very life is going to take all this stuff in and she's going to be measuring all her little details on the on the screen the gta screen where she's got maybe the health bars and all these avatar the mana bars and all this the chemical bars and all this stuff and if she's getting in all these bad foods and she's noticing the levels of chemicals going up she'll start hitting the button saying there's something wrong here bro this is not good and you'll start feeling anxious you'll start feeling depressed your your energy will go down you're not going to feel boisterous and powerful you'll start feeling more like a golem your breathing will go off as well you'll start to hunch over and all these terrible things will begin to happen and this is life basically saying to you stop doing what you're doing instead when you start eating probiotic foods foods that supply your gut with a lot of chemicals and um, good clean carbohydrates good clean meats all that type of stuff vegetables all that type of stuff life will eventually start to notice that all she's getting all the good chemicals in and being like all right this is working you're you're probably the hunter out there who's hunting all the good foods you're foraging you're well organized you always have food you're not having sugar crashes you're well fed it's it's high quality food here's some good chemicals here you go here's some good chemicals actually when you eat you get quite large doses of dopamine oftentimes people can get addicted to eating for precisely these reasons and even stuff like for example when you have depression what you will get fed is uh, by psychiatrists is a drug called an SSRI which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor now of course serotonin is a neurotransmitter that comes largely from your stomach 95% of it comes from your gut and if your gut bacteria from clean foods and probiotic foods is actually in place an awful lot of your the chemicals rushing through your brain will be healed and will be better it's really important to focus on getting this stuff right and actually spending time doing the due diligence in order to supply you with the good chemicals so that you develop that sizzle and that aura that creates that confident power and extension that pushes your energy out into the world instead of you ending up like a golem. Life rewards you with the good chemicals when you give her the good chemicals. And then the third step to do with the body again is movement and exercise and posture because of course the way that life looks at your avatar in a very very simple way she looks at you she's looking at you through her astral TV screen and if she sees you hunched over like Gollum walking around with a slouch and she's gonna start to say oh Jesus God this isn't good and she's gonna start to press the bad button she's gonna say if, if a lion burst into the room now because she spent millions of years with lions or if another dangerous guy burst into the room now and this guy had to fight to the death he's hunched over like a dork 
he's hunched over like Gollum, he's going to die. And so what would happen is she would start to hit the button to fill you with bad chemicals. She would take your hormones away from you. And of course, if you go and then you develop your, your posterior chain, you develop the muscles of your back, you develop your glutes, you develop all these strong, good muscles, you start to work out, you start to move more to show that you're fluid, you learn to fight and things like this. What will happen is you extend and you start to straighten up, you start to look an awful lot more like the Ubermensch and life will see this, you'll see a strong, healthy, juicy avatar who's in good shape, got a nice straight, elongated spine that's nice and fluid and healthy, muscles that are pumping, full of energy and what you'll start to do is you'll start hitting the button, give him the good chemicals. Hormones will shoot up through you more because your posture is straight and you'll start feeling better, your testosterone will go up, your mind will get calmer and you'll get more assertive, you'll start to develop confidence, all these type of things and all it takes you to do is just get these things in order and do the things that life would want. And then on top of that, you even notice, and this is well studied as well, when you go and you exercise, after you exercise, life is so happy with you exercising that she gives you an endorphin, a dose of endorphins, which are painkillers, also which are a derivative of heroin. She gives you free drugs and free chemicals when you do the things that she wants. So the third step in dealing with the body, before we go to the more mystical stuff, is about you getting really pragmatic with this stuff and focusing on moving in a way that life looks at you through her little visage and sees something that is healthy and strong that she wants to reward and say this guy could survive in the dangerous world that I've spent billions of years navigating through. Now beyond the mere biological life also fills you full of chemicals depending on your choices depending on the decisions that you make in life because ultimately she's trying to control you through decisions. The decisions you make determine whether you'll be successful whether you'll overcome the problems of death and entropy and time and actually live a long fulfilling life where you produce lots of creative things that make her satisfied. So the, the fundamental thing she's trying to do is she's trying to influence all your decisions through these instincts. When you're walking down the streets and you see a beautiful girl, she doesn't want you to have to rationalize and think what's going on. She will smash the button, go talk to the girl. And she wants you to do what she tells you because she spent millions and millions of years playing this game and she doesn't like, do you like it when your GTA player doesn't work, doesn't do the things that you tell it to do? No, you do not. You throw a tantrum. You say, this fucking game is broken. I hate this stupid thing. And you throw the, the controller at the wall or something like that. Life is very, very similar. When, she, when you see a beautiful girl, life hits you with this big button where she's smashing on lust and she's saying, you want that. You want this because you want to reproduce strong children that will be able to overcome entropy. Do this. Go for this. I want this. I want this. Do it. Do it. Listen to me. And if you don't do it, she's assuming that there's a couple of things wrong. First of all, she's assuming that you're scared of doing it. She thinks you're a coward. She thinks you're a little golem. She's like, all right, this guy won't go after this girl because he's probably intimidated that the girl's going to say no to him. He's not that confident. He's worried. He doesn't believe in himself. Well, this is not good. This is not the way, this is not a winning strategy. I need confident um, guys who listen to their instincts and go for what they want. So she starts hitting the bad button. It's like, I don't want a fucking golem. I don't want to play GTA with a golem for another 75 years. I want a, a juicy boy. I want someone who can go for what they want in this regard. Just start hitting with these big bad chemicals in order for you to pick yourself up and assert yourself in a positive way. Now, the big question you have to ask yourself is, all right, well, what is going on here? What is the driving force underneath this? This is a choice between courage and cowardice. It operates in everything. When someone in, tries to intimidate you and you stand up for yourself, that's you displaying courage. Life hits you with this anger inside of you and says, stand up to the person, even though it's risky, because she knows that the person who's able to take risks and go after things in GTA is the person who is good and able to win. And so she fills you full of good chemicals when you stand up and you act courageously. Maybe even if you get beaten up, she will still fill you with good ch chemicals of pride and happiness because you're like, all right, well, at least you stood up for yourself. The same with the girl. When you see the girl and you actually go over and talk to her and the girl's like, Bleh! never talk to me again. She may actually still fill you with good chemicals because she'll be like, at least you tried. At least you went for it. At least you have the courage to go for what you want because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone obviously who succeeds. That's the highest pleasure of all. But someone who goes for what they want is someone who's eventually going to succeed. That's what we're looking for in there. And if you keep on doing this, you keep on going for what you want. You keep on standing up and taking action and going for what you want. Life starts to see you in a different way. Even though you might not be fully succeeding and you might not have all the, the accolades to prove your, your confidence and all this type of stuff, she'll see you as someone who 
is, is assertive and chooses to go for what they want no matter what. And that will change your identity. You won't be someone who's afraid to go for what you want. You won't be a coward. You won't be a golem. And life won't punish you that way then. She won't start hitting the bad button. My hand is like sore from smashing my fingers against it. She won't hit the bad button. She'll start hitting this better button. This button where she says, all right, this guy is on the way to being a hero. He's actually asserting himself and doing this stuff. And what's most important about this is that this is a secret relationship that happens between you and life, you and your unconscious. You can sit there, you can see the beautiful girl or see the intimidating guy, and you can say to yourself, look, no one will see it. You'll feel these emotions that say, stand up for yourself or go for the girl or something like this. And, and you will say to yourself, no one's gonna see it if I just bitch out here. No one's gonna see it if I just act like a coward. It's fine. I don't need to do this. I don't need to put myself under this stress. But the problem is, is that it's you and life in there. And life will see it and she will punish you accordingly. And you're sitting there and if you want to feel good about yourself, you have to begin to develop an ability for you to over to understand what life is asking of you and what she's pushing you towards and what these instincts are demanding of you and the standards she's trying to lift for you and actually go for them and push yourself forward to developing the courage to go for what you want. And so the fifth question that you need to ask yourself is really meditating on life's goals. If you really want to consolidate this relationship, you got to stop making your feelings and your confidence about you because they don't come from you. They come from life. And so you have to sit down and assume that life's not a bitch. She's not sitting there smashing the golem button because she's just like all right i'm gonna make this guy feel terrible she's doing it for very specific reasons she's in this astral war she's in this spiritual war against death and she's sort of made you to help her along this game and maybe god is sitting there beside her helping her with this maybe this is this sort of unified plan that they have and so you have to sit down and empathize a little bit you know get outside yourself a little bit display some of these virtues that you're always talking about empathize with life and ask yourself well, what does she want and what does she see as most valuable and what does she reward in the highest level and that is creativity the ultimate spit in the face of death is the ability for you to be creative. Now, this creativity happens on scales. Some people will say, oh, not everybody's creative, Steph. Stop spreading your creative propaganda. This is not what I'm talking about. What I specifically want you to focus on, because that's completely untrue. Everybody is creative. If you uh, nut jizz inside a girl, you're going to create something. This is how you are built. This is how life works. On a very foundational level, life is just looking for you to just procreate. She will give you pleasure when you procreate because that's what she wants in the most basic level when you procreate you create a new being who can spend 70 years sticking their finger up and being like haha death I'm overcoming you for another generation death seeds at the thought of this happening but then the step beyond that of course is that there's higher ways that you can create it extends to more comprehensive ones for example you create a baby and maybe you just run along and leave a single mother behind you or maybe you create a family and extend out 20 babies and create this small little organization where you all work together in the family and extend out your power in a long, a long generational terms. This is a more sophisticated thing that's able to beat longer periods of time and ultimately time and entropy are related. Time is death. Time is killing us. And so the, the bigger and the larger scale of um, organization and power and anti and time resistant strategies as you build, the more life will reward you with big chemicals. So you build a big strong family that works. Life is going to start giving you more of these chemicals okay brother you're going in the right direction here I like it and then if you go beyond that and you build something that organizes the tribe and community around you and you begin to scale up life will give you more rewarded feelings oh you're a, a guy in high, who's in high status in his tribe and this is a good strong tribe that's working this is a really good position to be in I'm gonna give you loads of chemicals I'm gonna give you the most chemicals and then what happens is you go even the level up and you'll have all these instincts inside of you the desire to be creative the desire to develop culture the desire to get politically organized something that will last for maybe a hundred years a thousand years these bigger perspectives these the, a scientist who's going to create knowledge that's going to help the whole nation the whole country maybe the, the, the entire continent maybe the entire world these larger scale things will give you lots of good feelings as well because they create for life situations of statements of power that help her fight against entropy she rewards this stuff ultimately and you go for these big sacrifices in order to manifest this creativity and in the long run this will get you the most good chemicals at all this will get you life on your side ultimately she's looking for you to become a creative so that you can be a part of her spiritual war and do the right thing in that type of regard so if you don't understand this metathesis this mindset this way of seeing things you're going to make a very key and core mistake you're going to miss 
understand your own emotions. You're not going to make sense of what is happening to you when you feel bad emotions. And you'll start to take these silly ideas. It's like life's a bitch, life's against me, my emotions hate me, my emotions are just torturing me, life is just kind of playing, I'm like a voodoo doll and life's just poking on it being like, make him feel bad. I'm, I'm, life's a psychopath GTA player that's trying to just get me in a car and drive me and crash me off cliffs and stuff like this. You'll make that mistake. You need to have a correct mindset, a correct view, a correct perspective and all this stuff to coherently understand what your emotions are. And noggonism and jargonism will not do this for you. Now, once you have that perspective, once you see things clearly, things will get an awful lot more simpler. And all you really need to do is put in a strategy and a set of habits that allow you to develop a lifestyle that begins to put you on this direction. You need to get more serious about the way that you're dealing with courage and cowardice. You need to get more serious about the way that you're dealing with your feeding habits, your breathing habits, your exercising habits. You need to get more serious about the way you're dealing with your career and your creativity and your strategy and long-term life plan in order to put yourself in a situation. Now, when you put all this stuff in order and you put together a decent plan, you're gonna be in a good position. Even the plan itself can begin to give you better chemicals. People will call this having a purpose because they'll feel inside of themselves, now I've got a direction, now I've got somewhere to go, now I know what I'm doing in this type of regard. So I adhor you, I push you, Figure out how to do this. Sit down, spend some time studying with all this stuff and really push it in a direction to make sure that you're on that ascendant trajectory. Now, if you want to actually come with us, professionals, people who have done this with hundreds of boyos, actually sat them down, audited the way that they're looking at their emotions, looked at all their strategies and all their habits and all their lifestyle choices and shown them how to reorganize that stuff so it goes in a direction that fills them with sizzle instead of turns them into a golem or further spirals, spirals them down into Gollumism and if you want to do that you can come on board with us on the Boyo program. The way that this works is you go down and apply for a free call down below, a free consultation call. You sit down, you'll talk to one of my Boyos, probably the head coach Laszlo and if you're you're going to talk to him he's going to run through your situation, talk to you about what's going on with your specific situation, look at the strategies that you are developing to develop Sizzle and see if they're good enough and see ways that we could correct them and make them better. So thank you very much for your time. Pop in the link in the description down below and I will talk to you later. Stay juicy. Bye-bye.